So the number one thing that I see in uh, any type of female disorder is failure to metabolize our estrogens. So as everything is going down to, to a uh, low level at the end of the cycle, right before menstruation, I've seen many of these graphs now on, on uh, different women. The most common uh, problem here is a lack of a decrease of this estrogen. So this little gap right here between where estrogen ends and where progesterone ends, it's usually estrogen. This, the size of this gap determines how bad your menstrual cycle symptoms are, how bad the cramping, how bad the insanity, uh, the irritability, uh, the pain, the discomfort, really is determined in many situations by how far away these two end at the end of the cycle. And this is purely a, a liver and intestinal problem where estrogen is intended to be bound to sulfur and eliminated from your system and it's not happening. Glucuronic acid, methionine, it's an amino acid. These are the things that we need to get that estrogen out of your system and end up at a normal level here and eliminate that uh, uh, menstrual syndrome, premenstrual syndrome. Other reasons why uh, we end up uh, dysfunctional, number two, lack of follicle stimulating hormone release. The number one reason why we lack follicle stimulating hormone release is because these hormones don't both drop to low, low levels, which signals to the pituitary gland to begin the rise. So we're back here. So if we don't get the drop here, we don't get the rise here. That's probably the number one reason why we don't get uh, uh, this, this rise in follicle stimulating or hormone. Number three is the lack of an estrogen release. Now if we have a normal follicle stimulating hormone and we don't get the estrogen release, we have to look at you know uh, autoimmune or uh, other reasons, stress disorders that uh, affect the ovaries releasing estrogen. But again, the number one reason why this doesn't happen, why number three doesn't happen, is really this lack of metabolism of estrogen and this gap right here. Now we get into some uh, other disorders more commonly when we get into this stage. So if we lack a luteinizing hormone jump, that is most, co most uh, commonly uh, caused by cortisol, which is stress and it's stress um, to the extent that it's actually creating a hormonal disruption. So your cortisol levels go up too high or too low. Or insulin. So we are developing insulin resistance, which is that metabolic syndrome, and then we uh, suppress our luteinizing hormone uh, release here. If we don't get that release, next step doesn't work very well either. Um, but let's say we do get a peak of luteinizing hormone and we fail to bring that progesterone up, that's going to be a ovarian dysfunction and that's usually autoimmune and we might just throw in inflammation here generally. Okay, So that's how things break down in um, the female cycle and when hormones change, when inflammation changes, the chemistry of the body, the internal environment, sets the stage for cystic growth, fibrous growth, cancerous, cancerous growth. I mean, we know, right, if we add estrogen to the system in a system that isn't, isn't wanting, we get cancer, we get um, heart disease, we get dementia. So that's very well established in large, large studies published, you know, extensively. So these are just all the results and the consequences of that shift taking place. They are the circumstances that result from an imbalanced internal environment. And I, I like to categorize them all as it's, it's, it's poor health. So if you can take your uh, cystic ovaries, like if you can withstand that, endure it, you're still suffering in poor health. And there's going to be greater consequences by not getting your system back into regulation.